Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're going to talk about how to boost your performance of your Class A B amplifier by using a boost converter. These are fairly inexpensive and they are pretty robust I think. I've beaten this guy up, tested it quite a bit and it's hung in there and it pretty it does a pretty good job. Uh, this guy's rated 150 watts into a fan. You know, if you've got a fan blowing, keeping the air around it cool, 150 watts. If not, free air, it's rated at 100 watts. And it's probably capable of doing that. But I've done a review on this in the past, and I've also done reviews on this guy. What we want to do is we want to boost the performance of this guy by giving it uh, the optimal or the max input voltage that it can run on so that it, the amplifier can swing as high as it possibly can to get the most dynamic power out of this you can. Um, now, so this guy can take 18 volts, a maximum 18 volts. Well, let's say if you put this in your car, and your car's battery's at 12.6, or if you got a car running, 14.4, running down the road, um, you're still not at 17 volts. And, and that's gonna be kind of all over the place, right? So to regulate voltage, can you use this boost converter and put a clean voltage in this? Well, let's let's give that a try. Today we're gonna look at the output voltage of this. We're gonna regulate it to 17 and uh, about 18 volts, seven, 17 and a half, let's say. And we're going to um, look at the voltage ripple. And it, it's terrible, we'll see if we can clean it up. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, so this is the Class AB amplifier. It's one by Drock, the TDA7377 Pro. All right, so the power input are these first two terminals on this block. The right speaker output are the second two, and the left speaker output's on this side. And here's an input right here. Here's the volume control. Now this guy's rated, um, they, they say it's two times 35 watts with four ohms and 18 volt input. That's the highest uh, input voltage you can put into this, okay? So that's why this guy comes along. This is your boost regulator, your boost converter, and this guy has an input right here on this terminal block, this red and black one that are twisted together, and the output, these two wires here. So the input comes in, you have an input capacitor, a switching transistor, and a nice toroid inductor, and a little potentiometer here to adjust your output voltage, and then an output diode, and your LED showing you have power. Pretty simple board. Now the amazing thing is, now this is by OSKJ, as you can see, and there's a control chip, and there's a sense resistor to sense the current. So this is a pretty simple boost regulator design. It looks to me like it's a pretty robust design and it seems to be working fairly well. It has two heat sinks, one for input, one for output power. We're gonna look at the efficiency, okay? The efficiency will change depending on your input and your output and your, and your power, of course. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust this uh, boost regulator so that it'll regulate um, close to 18 volts output, probably 17 and a half. Somewhere between there and 18 volts, okay? And we just don't want to go over 18 volts, so we'll err on the, on the low side if we need to. And we're going to look at the noise here on the output before we connect it to our amplifier. And then it will just simply, these output terminals will just connect to these two terminals right here. We're going to look at the heat on this thing to see if we think it can sustain the output. Now this guy's rated for a max of 150 watts, but you really need cooling. They, they say you need cooling for that, and they say in free air, you know, just sitting out here in the air, that you can get 100 watts. So, yeah, we'll, we'll check on that. So 100 watts output, and let's say it's 90%, that means you'd be dissipating about 10 watts. So you got probably three components are gonna be putting out most of the heat. And that, that seems believable. Uh, for dynamic power, I think this is a pretty good setup. This guy's about 840, 
$8.40 in single quantities, but if you're going to buy one, I'd suggest buying five because you can get five for about $16 for around double the price. You have five of them. So that's pretty cool. Now this guy's about $16. So relatively inexpensive, okay? Now to really tie it together, what we'll do is we'll use this little board here with this Bluetooth antenna. You can use your phone connecting this guy up into here. You can use your phone to play music through your amplifier. And with this guy, we can get an optimal setup for power for this guy with, with using this boost uh, converter. Okay, so those are our three components. But we're, today we're going to test this out and I'll demonstrate this again. I've already demonstrated this setup once, but each time I'm going to be a little bit more specific on how we can, um, how we can set up each device. So this time it's the boost converter. Okay, I zoomed out just a little bit, and I'm going to move the amplifier over here, and let's just talk about the setup. I've got this red and blue lead coming from my Instec, GW Instec power supply on the bench, and it's running over here. The blue is our return, the red's the positive, so the blue one comes out right here, okay? So we're going to just connect that into our input power, our black, okay? And then our red one, we're going to go through this multimeter right here. I'll show, I'll zoom out and show you this setup better. It's going to go into the positive lead of the multimeter, and the common lead is going to come out and go into our red input of our power supply. I got these big old alligator jaws connecting those up. So that's our input. So now we'll be able to monitor the input current with this meter. As I say, I'll pull this out so you can see the the whole setup a little bit easier. I just want to show you the connections to this, how we're doing it. Okay, so that's our input power setup. The output power, before we hook it to our amplifier, we want to test it, but we want to put a load on it. So we're going to use this 18 ohm 91 watt resistor. And I'm just going to twist these wires on these terminals and then we'll tie the output into this. Okay, so I'll just set this over on the bench. Let me hook that up. Okay, let me hook up this load right here. I'm just going to set it over here out of the way a little bit and coil this wire around. It's kind of long. Okay, we're going to swing the power supply over this way and just, you know what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of put these together. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use this multimeter. These are the leads to our other multimeter and we're going to read the output voltage with these. And we'll use these big old jaws to help hold our wires together. They're pretty strong. Okay, so there's our output monitoring and our load. Okay, and we'll be using this meter. Like I say, I'll, I'll zoom out here in a moment so you can see the setup. Just want to show you how it's hooking this up. Some people are kind of interested in seeing the whole setup. Now the other thing is I want to look at the output with an oscilloscope because I want to look at the ripple. So we're going to use this differential probe lead set. Now I'll connect positive to positive. All right, so then this this power supply, nice power supply, uh, but it only has aluminum electrolytic, so I don't think it's good for high frequency. We're probably going to have some high frequency ripple. I have these two kind of extreme sizes from each other, capacitors, to try. Um, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll just touch them to the wires out here and we'll look at it over here on the uh, scope to see what kind of improvement we get. This is a basic one microfarad cap. That seems to be kind of a go-to for kind of output coupling. It's good value. 100 volt, one microfarad. This guy is a 15 uh, microfarad, 100 volt. So, wow, huge difference, right? So basically caps are rated on kind of a CV rating, capacitance times voltage rating. So in, in the same kind of technology. So this guy, 15 times bigger than this guy, basically, CV. The C is 15 times bigger, the volts are the same. So yeah, so that's kind of, you know, it's kind of the size. We're, we'll try them both out here and we'll see what it looks like on the scope, okay? All right, guys, so this is our current meter reading the input current from our lab power supply right here. The wire's coming from the lab power supply. 
and this is reading the output voltage right here the red and black tied to this red and black wire coming up here clipped into our output where with our differential probes going to our differential meter set times 20 position the Pentec DP25 this is our fluke I'll probably use this for temperature 76 degrees here in my lab it's kind of warm out here um, so here's the amplifier volt power up later and our DC regulator here's the little capacitors and I think that's everything except for the screwdriver I'm going to use to tweak that down to about 18 volts okay I'm going to set this back here and take the wires off of this resistor I don't want that resistor heating up any of my wires uh, it's okay on this mat it's silicon and it's it can handle the heat so all right so that's the bench setup guys okay, so here's the lab supply let me just show you the setup okay it's the GWN stack uh, GPC 3030 so it goes each output goes up 30 volts at 3 amps okay and if I push both these buttons in I get parallel and this is a master side and the slave so I'm in the master my reds in the plus blues in return minus and I've got the current cranked all the way up so that way I can get six amps out on this side because I'm going to be about I'm going to adjust this for 12.6 so that the boost converter will boost that up and I guess it doesn't matter whether I'm 12.6 or 14.4 inside the battery uh, operating range but here let's go ahead and crank that up okay we're about 12.6 almost well 13 I guess but okay we got one amp output so about 13 watts now that's times two see there's one amp on each side that's the volts on this side that's the volts on that side so I'm just reading current on one side so it's really 26 watts output right now and that's probably right because on my meter down here I'm seeing 20 almost 21 volts on the output in 18 ohms okay so that's the setup here let me take you down to the power supply and and we'll adjust the voltage okay so I think you can see that it's 20 well yeah really 21 volts 2 amps I think that resist resistor is getting hot and the voltage cross that just came up maybe I don't know uh, maybe it's just a power supply regulating but this resistor is pretty hot right now so let me get in this potentiometer it's a multi-turn pot so you got a lot of adjustment okay good uh, counterclockwise is down so I'm going to adjust that for just under 18 volts that way we'll have just about the max voltage of this uh, power amplifier module Wow, this multi-turn really has some precision. I think I'll go 17.8. Just below 18 volts. Uh, maybe 17 three quarters. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so now what you're going to see me do, we're going to go to the scope and see what the ripple looks like. And I'm going to put these capacitors. I'm going to start off the little one, then I'll put the big one. And we'll just see. I suspect there's going to be ripple. I've seen this power supply before, so we're going to see if we can clean it up. Alright guys, quick setup of the scope. I've got um, my differential probe in channel 2. It's times 20, so we want to make sure, okay, it's times 20. We got that. And voltage, okay, good. And it's going to be inverts off, full bandwidth and uh, DC 1 mega ohm impedance so that's all good um, I've got some measurements set up I got RMS maximum so we'll see the peak measurement there and peak to peak okay and triggerings on channel 2 because that's where we are rising edge right now it's set up at 19.2 so I'll push I'll just push this in so to set it, it's just set up down here at the bottom right now. And uh, we're set at uh, 100 microseconds per division and 4 volts per division. So that way we'll go at 4, 8, 12, 16. Yeah, so we'll be right in this range. Alright, let's turn on the power supply and see what we get.
and that is not so bueno that's a lot of noise um, it says peak to peaks like almost 9.6 volts because it's 4 volts per that's pretty horrible uh, max is 23 uh, so that's pretty bad as well because the peaks are really high so we don't want that going into our our audio amplifier okay now you know what I, I need to trigger on this better and, and zoom out so I can capture that okay so you can kind of see that there now I can bring the trigger up you know what I'm gonna hit auto set I want to just show what auto set can do okay now if I move that trigger up okay we're triggering on the peaks of this ripple but now let's zoom in now here's another thing I can do a fit screen or AC priority let's try out AC priority now right now see where my reference is okay now watch what happens auto set now put my reference way down there uh, and I'm two volts per division so I'm really zooming in on this ripple is what it's doing so if I bring the trigger up I capture the peak of those that ripple now if I zoom back out okay there's the ringing caused by the switching FET now you notice there's two pulses kind of close and then distance and two pulses kind of close well one of them is a transistor turning off and one's transistor turning off dead time turn on turn off that kind of thing so that's our ripple right there pretty bad and you know that's not totally surprising because all we have is aluminum electrolytics okay now when we hook it up to the audio amplifier it has some input coupling capacitors which will really help that but just to clean it up before we even do that let me put that one mic cap in and let's see what that looks like okay I'm trying to touch it to the two terminals wow look at that that dropped it down quite a bit look at this peak to peaks 9.4 when I put this one mic in now by the way I'm just holding it when you solder it it'll be a little bit better than this that's down a bit two volts that's still not great right okay let's try the big 15 mic cap you might have heard that pop that was the capacitor touching down kind of scared me a little bit okay and that looks about the same as the one mic cap it doesn't seem like it's a function of the uh, capacitance it's more of a function of getting a low ESR uh, capacitor to get the high frequency ripple all right so to look into this a little deeper we could go to our spectrum analyzer right uh, we go to FFT most scopes have FFT but I have a spectrum on this which is similar to the FFT a little quicker and easier to use so I'll just jump to that here's my spectrum and I'm on channel 3 that's why we're not seeing anything let's get that channel 2 there we go okay now also I can see that I have some uh, I have max hold uh, let's see something's on oh max holds on so if I turn that off you see that but you see how it's bouncing around so if I turn max hold on it kind of captures the maximum the worst case kind of builds up on that that'll kind of help us um, see what we do with, with the improvement with the capacitors let's go back to the one microfarad cap here before we do that let's see what the uh, bandwidth is here okay span is 100 kilohertz we're starting at 10 hertz and stopping at 100k let's increase our span okay there's the spectrum that's out to 10 megahertz now amplitude wise we're at 20 db this is 40 db so this guy is getting close to 30 here it's definitely worse at the low frequencies so we'll want to zoom in on the audio spectrum here but i just want to look at the wide spectrum to see how the capacitors affect it let's try that one mic cap wow that just drops it really low down now see if i can hold that look at these there's some kind of high peaks here kind of high peaks here there's a peak there and there's some peaks way out here but i think we want to look at this first thing okay this is 10 meg and this is one meg so this is out to one meg 
Let's get the big cap on there just to see what we see. Wow, snap again. Wow, that that drops this way down. That does a great job. That actually does a better job than what we saw when we were just looking at the ripple. All right, let's go change our, uh, well, actually, you know what else? Our bandwidth, okay, I think we're at our max bandwidth around the hamming. Let's go back to the frequency and go stop. Let's stop at uh, one meg. Okay, we're starting at one hertz and we're going to one meg. It's kind of an interesting ripple. I just want to make sure that's real. Let's turn it off for a minute and turn it back on. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, right? So, probably harmonics of the switching frequency. Every one of these is 100K, and you see that little spike there, and there's spike there, spike, and, and it's kind of on top of each one of these ripples. Probably has to do with the switching frequency in the spectrum. You know how there's a turn on and a turn off spike, so that creates some energy at each one of those. Okay, here let's put the small one mic cap on. Wow, you can definitely see the harmonics there. The switching frequency, right? Okay. Okay. The, now let's put the 15 mic on. Oh, that does a much better job. Now the worst one is here. That's actual switching frequency, I would guess. It's just over 100 kilohertz. Here, let's go back and look at the ripple, and we can see what the switching frequency is. Right here, it says 100 kilohertz, 102 kilohertz. So even with the big capacitor, the one big spike left was 100 kilohertz. That's why when we were looking at this picture, the one mic and the 15 mic looked about the same. But when we look at the bigger picture, we see the actually the 15 mic cleared up the other harmonics where the one mic did not okay let me do the um, spectrum i mean i'm sorry let me do the fft source channel two all right guys so now we have fft looking like our spectrum it's uh, 500 kilohertz in the center and one meg across each grid is a uh, hundred kilohertz so the first one's just off 100 Multiply that by two, it puts a little bit further away from 200 and so on and so on. You can see our harmonics. Let's put the one mic fared cap on and see what that does. Okay, there we go. Wow, it didn't look great, right? One mic fared cap, I don't see a huge change. Okay, there's the one mic fared cap on. And there's it off. It's kind of interesting. It almost pushes it up. But over here, I think it drops it down. Over here... Okay, let's take another look at it. Yeah, see a little less energy through here, but it kind of pushed up here. Now I'll take it off. I don't know, it might be a little worse here. I'm kind of surprised, I thought I'd see a little bit more. Okay, now we're putting the 15 mic cap on. Okay, so here's the 15 mic fared cap. Okay, now you can see, I keep on dropping it off. Okay, there we go. See how it drops it down? Okay, there's it on, right? That's that's it on right there. Now I'll take it off. You see how it floats back up? Okay, let's look at the one mic cap again. There's a one mic cap. And take it off. So that's interesting. All right, guys, so this is a spectrum with the power supply plugged into the amplifier. So the amplifier capacitors on the power supply really help the noise. You can see how we don't see the harmonics of the power supply. Now, here, let's just go look at the actual voltage waveform. All right, so let's go ahead and turn off the spectrum and just look at the math. I mean, the ripple. And you can see it's reduced quite a bit, kind of like how it looked with our poly caps on there. Now you can see it moving around, that's the regulation. There's not much of a load on it right now, so let's increase the load. But before we do that, let's just go jump into the spectrum again. And look at that spectrum, look how clean it is. So the power supply on the uh, audio amplifier board has done a lot to help clean it up without adding our poly cap. 
Okay, and so this is with um, the amplifier putting out about 14.6 volts RMS into that resistor. So about the same uh, power we had before. And again, looking at the power supply input to the audio amplifier, that, that power supply cleaned up the voltage quite a bit. You can see how it looks so much better. So it looks like we may not need to add our poly caps, although it never hurts to add a little, by, a little extra bypassing, but it looks pretty darn good. Hey guys, so what do you think? I think this looks like it might be a good matchup. Uh, Video is getting kind of long. I'll do another one where I'll check the max power we can get out on this, or max dynamic power, and we'll see. This guy ran pretty cool during testing. So I am pretty sure he can handle all the dynamic power this guy wants. And I think by providing that 17 volts, those extra volts, uh, provides an extra voltage swing for this. No more dynamic power. Um, but I'll check THD and we'll see if that's worth the video. Let me know what you think. Uh, if there's anything else you want me to cover with this setup. Hey guys, so maybe I, what I can do is include this little Bluetooth in a video on how this works and and include that with the THG measurements. So let me know what you guys think, okay? All right, hey, thanks for watching.